this is Curtis Kelly contacting you from Crystal Lake, Michigan. You can see some of the beautiful scenery out here. And I'm going to talk about my poster session, How Preschool Changes Executive Function in Life. And I'd like to start by thinking about a question. The question is, what's the purpose of education? I mean, our whole infrastructure. In our societies today, we're putting the students in school for 20 years or so, you know, youth in school, and they could for part of that time at least be working and doing other things. We're spending so much money on education. What is the purpose of it? How can we understand what we're doing, whether it's of value or not, unless we can answer that question? And I thought about it for a long time, and maybe for the social level, it's to we provide education to train people to operate in our society at the macro level. But what about the micro level? What's the purpose of education in terms of each individual? Well, sometimes we might say in Japan we teach English so our students can get better jobs. But I think there's a bigger picture involved. And it came to me after a couple years, it's, it's really quite simple. The purpose of education, the educational system, is to help people succeed in life. And I don't mean just financial success, but to live better lives. And whether that means giving them training so they can get a job, uh, teaching them how to communicate so they can get along better with others. There's many factors, you know, there's many aspects involved. And if you think about that that's the purpose of what we're doing in the classroom, to help people live better lives, there's really a lot of things we're missing. We're maybe not teaching some important things like what love is or what relationships should be like or how to manage relationships. And then a lot of the things we do, we just kind of do because they've been done in the past without realizing their impact on the individual and the individual's future. And that's partly related to my presentation today. How does what we do in preschool affect those people's lives, their entire lives? And there's some really interesting research that explains how that happens. So how preschool exchanges, changes executive function and life. And now the question is, uh, according to the research, which of these factors, the ones in the poster, are most closely related to later success of students in school and life? IQ? Well, this is what we thought a long time ago, that IQ was the most important factor for success or who was successful and who wasn't, because they could succeed in the educational system. But uh, Heckman's research found that wasn't the case. Well, what about the others? Character, uh, single parent home, family income, sports and club activities. Actually, there's only one of those that has a huge effect that's supported by the research, and that is character. Well, IQ. This is what we used to believe, but Heckman's research found that it wasn't very important. Heckman's research worked like this. He looked at high school dropouts, high school students that graduated, and high school students that got their degrees through GED, which means they got their degrees later by testing. They had originally dropped out, but they could go back and get testing. And he looked at which of those um, high school graduates and GED recipients went on to college and how they did. And he found two interesting things. First of all, the students with the GEDs and the students that graduated normally have the same levels of IQ. Little difference between them. The other interesting thing he found out was the students that graduated from high school and went to college had a far higher success rate, college graduation rate, than those that went with GEDs. Those students dropped out again and again and again so that I think something like 90% of them didn't graduate from college. There's some factor like that. I can't remember the exact number. So that made him go in and look at some other data, data on personality and character. Because he found that um, the big five, these soft factors in, in, edu in uh, personality, such as conscientiousness, um, emotional stability, um, agreeableness, in other words, the, the ability to cooperate with others. And factors like that had a much higher effect, much greater effect, on whether the student was able to graduate from college or not. In fact, Terry Moffitt's research also found 
that people with these personality traits, especially conscientiousness, that's the, the king of all of those, but students with conscientious, the ability to persevere and to uh, finish something, those students had higher incomes, less crime, less rates of alcoholism, fewer teen pregnancies, and a whole myriad of factors that represent success in life. Uh, income, uh, ownership of your own house, and so many other things like that. I mean, the, the graph is stunning if you look at the big five score versus income or alcoholism or other things like that. So Heckman, an economist, realized that it's the soft skills that really determine success in the 21st century. So if you think about it, what skills do people need for success in the 21st century? They are character skills. The ability to stick with something, persistence, to get things done. The ability to be flexible and, and take in new ideas and not become too rigid. The ability to hold off before reacting to something. Um, if somebody says something that makes you angry instead of responding with a, another hurtful phrase, to think about what that person's trying to say. The ability to focus on something, to give it to your full attention and, and uh, complete it. The ability to reason and the ability to hold a lot of separate ideas in your mind to do so. And Adele Diamond um, defined these in terms of the brain as the four parts of executive function, which you can also see on the poster. And the four parts are inhibitory control, working memory, attention focusing and shifting, cognitive flexibility. And what do these mean? Well, I'll explain. Inhibitory control means the ability to limit oneself, to time oneself, and related to that is the ability to stay on task, to give selective attention to something, to be less compulsive, and to follow through on things. And research has shown that maybe this is the most important because inhibitory control has an impact on health, wealth, uh, crime rates, income, and many other factors. Again, this is Terry Moffat's research. The second is working memory. And that means the ability to hold things in mind and work on them, to relate them to each other. And that's a, a critical skill for students learning how to read. They have to be able to understand or hold in mind what they read in the sentences before in order to process the current sentence that they're reading. And it's an important skill for reasoning, being able to hold many ideas in mind and to compare them and manipulate them. Uh, the third one is attention focusing and shifting. And that means the ability to focus on something and some, not be scattered all over the place. And attention shifting in that case would mean um, you know, when students come in from the playground, they have to realize that they're in a different environment in the classroom. And when they sit down, they have to kind of relax and get on to studying instead of still playing around with each other. And these things are very hard for children. The last one is cognitive flexibility. And that's a really important one, too. Um, asking children, how many uses can you think of for a table in your house? Uh, being able to think of different things, to be creative. Creativity is related to cognitive flexibility. It's related to anger, anger management. Instead of jumping to conclusions right away, maybe thinking about po different possibilities for why something happened. And of course, it's uh, in our days of, in our age now, with great risk and variability, cognitive flexibility in particular is important for dealing with the world. So these are the four parts of executive function. And for children, all these things are hard. Inhibitory control, for example. There's a famous study in which a child is offered a cookie now, but if the child doesn't eat the cookie and waits for five minutes, when the person comes back, they can have two cookies. You see videos of this on YouTube, and the children are trying so hard to work out strategies not to eat that cookie so they get a second one later. And research has found that the, the children that do eat the cookie, I think I was probably one of those, uh, tend to have more problems with jobs and other things later in life. Okay. Um, now, the interesting thing about executive function, which, by the way, is a development in the prefrontal cortex, is that it can be taught. 
we can have scaffolding in the classroom that allows it to develop. It develops between the ages of three and five. And if it doesn't develop in that time period, between three and five, it can be developed later, but at a higher price. It takes more time. So preschool is very critical for children in developing their executive function. And the way that we manage the preschools is important too. For example, teachers giving students a question and then answering it right away instead of making them think about it, make it go into their working memory and asking them to reason. Um, teachers, teacher-centered teaching in which the teacher and the student are doing things rather than having students work in groups and pairs. Our focus on content instead of other things like uh, taekwondo or music or sports or things that also are related to executive function development. There's various ways that we can help student, help young children develop these skills that will be useful for the rest of their life, not only in school, but also at their jobs and other places. And research, again, Adele Diamond's research, has found a number of techniques that can be used in a classroom for scaffolding. And they are. On the poster, you can see CogMed computer-based training. Some research has shown that that has an effect on executive function. Uh, PAS, Promoting Alternative Thinking Strategies, a curricular approach. The Chicago School Readiness Project, CSRP. And even extracurricular activities like joining the chess club or studying taekwondo or martial arts, music, dance, things like that teach young children how to control their bodies and minds in a in doing complex activities. And a rather famous one is Tools of the Mind, which is developed by Vitskotsky. The research as to how that develop, works on executive functions is a little bit less clear, but it's used a lot in Montessori type schools. Uh, for example, one Tools of the Mind activity would be having children plan their play before they do it. Another one would be pair reading. One student is the reader, and the other student is a listener. And to help the, the students stay in these roles, they're each given a card. The reader holds a mouth card, while the listener holds an ear card. And when they change roles, they exchange cards so they can keep in mind what they're supposed to do. Um, I can't remember whether it's PAS or CR, CSRP, but looking into those programs, they have some really interesting things that they're doing. For example, um, projects in which groups of students work together. And first of all, the students decide what they want to do, like make a spaceship or something. The next stage would be for them to draw pictures of what they think it'll look like, what tools they'll need to do it, then assigning roles to each other and rules for how to, how to, con you know, how to conduct this project, and doing lots of planning and pre-thinking and uh, setting up behaviors and then actually enacting those in conducting the project. Uh, this is used in the International Baccalaureate Program, I think. So that's basically my presentation, the importance of executive function in uh, the success of people in their lives. And please look at the suggested reading. One important factor that Adele Diamond brought out in her presentation in Quito is when something's wrong with the student, health, hunger, stress, or whatever, the first thing to suffer is executive function. Students become more compulsive, their memory ability gets goes down and things like that. And Paul Tuff's book, How Children Succeed, really explains well why children growing up in stressful environments have so much trouble in school, but also how they can be saved later with, you know, tender loving care, basically, in the school system. I really recommend that book because it talks about executive function and the problem of stress for so many young people. Okay, well, hopefully we'll be able to Skype so you can make uh, comments or ask questions and we can continue this discussion while you're, it's 3 a.m. here and you're at the FAB, the wonderful FAB conference. Thank you very much. Curtis Kelly at Crystal Lake, Michigan. Hope to talk to you again sometime. Okay, bye-bye.